Remember when you could jingle the coins in your pocket and feel the satisfying weight of bills in your wallet? In 2024, cash will be as rare as a hard-to-find Pokemon card. This video provides insights into the diminishing availability of cash in 2024. It will discuss the reasons behind this trend and offer valuable tips at the end to help you prepare for this shift. One of the main reasons for this scarcity is the hefty amount of debt that the government is grappling with. According to a United Nations report, global public debt hit a jaw-dropping $92 trillion in 2022. Yes, you heard that right. Governments worldwide were forced to borrow money to tackle crises like the infamous COVID-19 pandemic. But here's the kicker. The developing countries are feeling the weight of this debt the hardest. They're shouldering nearly 30% of the colossal global public debt. And guess who's hogging a whopping 70% of that? China, India, and Brazil. Furthermore, 59 developing countries now have a debt-to-GDP ratio that skyrocketed beyond the 60% threshold. You see, these developing countries are wrestling to get enough money, face rising borrowing costs, suffer from currency devaluations, and their economies are slumping. According to the UN report, many developing countries are left high and dry, scrambling to find affordable and sufficient financing. In 50 emerging economies, the money they spend on interest payments exceeds 10% of their total revenues. In Africa alone, the bucks spent on interest payments surpass what they invest in education or health. This means the debt collectors are getting a more significant chunk of the pie than the sectors crucial for long-term development. To break this down, imagine you're borrowing money from friends for a big project, like building a treehouse. Your buddies might lend you a few bucks here and there, but you probably wouldn't ask them for all the money. That's kind of how things work with countries and debt. When a government needs money for building roads or running schools, it borrows from different sources. One source is other countries, like lending a shovel from your next door neighbor. But another significant source is private lenders, like banks and investors, who act like your friends chipping in. Now, here's the twist. In some countries, especially poorer ones, these private lenders are becoming like the cool kid everyone wants to borrow from. They hold a bigger and bigger chunk of the debt, like your friend suddenly wanting to build half the treehouse. In Africa, these private lenders went from having 30% of the debt pie to 44% in just 10 years, like your friend doubling their investment. In Latin America, they almost own the whole treehouse. They hold 74% of the debt there. But there are risks. Like if you owe your friends too much, they might ask for part of your treehouse in return. High debt can make it hard for countries to spend on things like healthcare or education. And if interest rates go up, it's like charging fees for using your friend's tools. Now, looking into the banking sector, what caused the banking crisis this year? Well, the banking crisis 2023 was caused by a combination of factors, including rising interest rates, declining commercial property values, and a looming recession. However, specific issues led to the failure of three banks, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and First Republic Bank. SVB, a California regional bank that dealt mainly with tech startups, faced insolvency due to a bank run. After announcing a significant loss and credit downgrade, high net worth customers withdrew massive funds from their accounts, causing liquidity issues for the bank. Signature Bank, headquartered in New York City, specializes in private real estate, private equity, and cryptocurrency. It faced regulatory scrutiny for failing to recognize unlawful activities related to Sam Bankman-Fried's cryptocurrency exchange, FTX, which collapsed. As a result, the bank was placed under the receivership of the FDIC, a team of financial superheroes built by Congress to protect the country's money and to keep everyone confident about it. In response to the banking crisis, the Federal Reserve took several measures to stabilize the sector. One of these actions was the launch of the Bank Term Funding Program. This program provided emergency credit to eligible financial institutions, allowing them to pledge collateral for the Fed to purchase through open market operations. The program offered generous terms, such as pricing securities at their original value rather than their depressed market value and an interest rate based on the one-year overnight index swap rate plus 10 basis points or one hundredth of one percent. Although, Fed Vice Chair for Supervision Michael Barr stated that the Fed did not take forceful enough action to prevent the catastrophe. He also mentioned a lack of supervision during the Trump administration. Additionally, rollbacks of the Dodd-Frank Act 
which were the rules baked into the financial pie to stop another great recession from burning everyone's fingers, including stress testing of banks, were seen as contributing to the obscurity of the crisis. But was there any problem when the Fed raised interest rates? When the Federal Reserve raises the Fed funds rate, it influences the overall interest rate environment, including the rates on longer-term Treasury securities. As interest rates rise, the value of existing fixed-rate securities, such as long-term Treasury bonds, tends to decrease. This is because new bonds issued at higher interest rates offer better returns potentially reducing the attractiveness of existing bonds with lower yields. Rising interest rates further compound the challenges for commercial real estate loans. Higher interest rates increase borrowing costs for businesses, making it more challenging to service their loans and increasing the likelihood of default. This can lead to a decline in building valuations and reduce demand for new development. While financial experts are essentially in agreement that the Federal Reserve's aggressive rate hiking strategy will inevitably lead to a slowdown, the real question remains, what will happen in 2024? Will there be a couple of quarters marked by economic contraction that could potentially push the Fed to implement rate cuts and weaken the dollar? Amundi, one of the largest asset managers in Europe, has predicted that the United States will plunge into a full-blown recession during the first half of 2024. As a result, they aren't too keen on the dollar and instead favor shifting their focus towards emerging market assets. Many people are wondering whether the US dollar will collapse in the future. This has become more relevant with the changing global economic landscape, including China's growing influence and considering oil trade without using the US dollar. Currency collapses usually happen when people lose faith in the stability or usefulness of a currency as a reliable form of value or exchange. When users no longer believe in a currency's worth, it can quickly run into trouble. This can be due to various reasons, such as incorrect valuations, pegging the currency to another, chronic low economic growth, or high inflation. Like many major national currencies, the US dollar's main weakness is its value is based solely on government fiat. In the past, having a currency backed by a tangible commodity like gold was considered more reliable. Without this anchorage, there is concern that governments might print too much money for various political or war-related purposes. If the Federal Reserve prints money faster than the economy grows and the US government assumes and monetizes debt rapidly, it could lead to a decline in the currency's future value. Some scenarios could potentially cause a sudden crisis for the US dollar. One possibility is a combination of high inflation and high debt, which might force the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates significantly to combat rising consumer prices. Suppose the US government struggles to afford interest payments. In that case, foreign creditors might start selling off the dollar which could trigger a collapse. Another scenario could involve the U.S. experiencing a severe recession or depression without significantly impacting the rest of the world. In such a scenario, people might lose faith in the dollar and abandon it. A significant global power like China or a post-European Union Germany may reintroduce a commodity-based standard and dominate the reserve currency space. If the U.S. dollar were to collapse, it would lead to more expensive imports. The government would struggle to to borrow money at reasonable rates, resulting in a deficit requiring raising taxes or printing more money to cover the gaps. This would cause inflation to skyrocket due to higher import costs and increased money supply, ultimately leading to an overall collapse of the economy. So should you still hold cash in your bank or under your mattress? Not for 2024 anymore. Start investing in bonds. Investing in bonds is like ordering a tasty dish at a restaurant. Next year, bonds are expected to become a mouthwatering choice for investors. Experts predict that interest rates will start climbing again and stay higher for a while. This is excellent news for those interested in the fixed income market, especially long-term investors. Imagine you're at a buffet with a dish known for its incredible flavor. That's what bonds are becoming in 2024. They are expected to give you a tasty return on your investment around 4.8% to 5.8% annually over the next decade. But what are the best types of bonds to hold on to in 2024? Experts recommend going for short-term corporate bonds. These bonds offer higher yields and lower risk compared to treasury bills. Investing smartly in short-term corporate bonds could earn a yummy 6% or more return. 
To invest in short-term bonds, you can purchase individual bonds directly or invest in bond funds focusing on short-term fixed income securities. Bond funds offer diversification and professional management, while individual bonds provide more control over specific maturity dates and coupon rates. By going for short-term corporate bonds, you can reduce the impact of potential interest rate changes and challenging access to cash. Secondly, bet on gold. The World Gold Council's outlook for 2024 reveals that the chances of economic conditions negatively impacting gold prices are slim, ranging from just 5% to 10%. Suppose the economy experiences a soft or hard landing. Gold prices are expected to be boosted, potentially skyrocketing to new heights. In fact, gold prices have already been turning heads in the market. Just imagine, year to date, gold prices have experienced a remarkable 12% increase. Investors, including central banks, have been flocking to gold for its potential to hedge against inflation. During the first three quarters of this year alone, they purchased 800 metric tons of gold. That's a 14% increase compared to the same period last year. Investing in gold offers various avenues to explore. One popular method is to purchase physical gold, such as gold bars or coins, which can be stored securely. Another option is to invest in gold exchange-traded funds, ETFs, which are traded on stock exchanges and allow you to indirectly own gold. Additionally, investing in gold mining companies can provide exposure to the gold market through the potential for company growth and profitability. 2024 is here, and a big bag of questions is ready to shake things up. Can the Fed chief, Jerome Powell, slow the economy gently, like a smooth landing after a plane ride? Or things crash and burn like a dropped ice cream cone? Will the stock market keep rocketing like a firework or sputter and fizzle out? Remember those digital coins called crypto? Will they return and become everyone's favorite toy again? Or will they get tucked away in a dusty drawer? Remember, when building your financial future, assessing your risk tolerance and consulting a financial advisor to determine the most suitable approach for your investment objectives is vital. Did you just gain a knowledge supernova in this video? Give it a like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more epic voyages into the uncharted seas of knowledge. This was just the appetizer. The next video? A five-course feast for your brain. Watch it now!